Hello, good to see you again. Might be nine in the morning on Wednesday, or you may watch this later sometime. But it's good to have you at our home this summer. We're here at our home for these yeah. uh, touch points, and we it, we feel like it is a touch point with you. And um, we're just going in different places on our yard, you know. And you can see that's our house. Can you see the house in the back? Up on the, on the hill. Stairway. This is the stairway leading down to our dock. Sometime we're going to take you out on the dock. Like I think we did that last summer. We'll go out on the dock. And we had an idea, Joy, or someone had the idea to do it out on the boat, on the pontoon maybe. That'd be sometime. great. We'll take you out on the lake. Yeah. Maybe we should bring a fishing pole along. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad to have you yes. watching this morning. Share it with others if you think it's helpful and a blessing. Yes. So you want me to share my yeah, little you got enjoy? Some enjoy? I got enjoy. a couple of them. This is from a few days ago. I wrote, I'm enjoying watching a hummingbird. It's a ruby-throated hummingbird feed on my colorful petunias in my flower box under my bathroom window. It was awesome to be that close. And it just he went from flower to flower to flower. I love it. Oh, so I got to get this. I Googled something. So I Googled. I started thinking about are Minnesota hummingbirds, and it says, did you know, this is from Google, that a hummingbird can visit up to 2,000 flowers each day looking for its nectar. The other thing, it says no, ruby. I didn't know that. <laughs> no. This is going to be ruby-throated hummingbirds are common in Minnesota during warm summer months but once cooler temperatures start to arrive these hummingbirds migrate to mexico mexico amazingly most of them travel across the gulf of mexico to reach their wintering grounds they make this journey in a single flight. How do they store up all the energy? I, I thought, I'm going to have to Google if that's <laughs> actually accurate. But this is from a watching Hummingbird Minnesota site. Anyway, that's amazing. So why don't you share about how you, the thing with your enjoy thing has to do with robins. Oh, I like robins. They're, robins are nice. <laughs> what do you tell me almost every day? Yeah, I like because we have a robin. This you can hear it. I don't know if they can hear that or not, but there's a robin robining. Just one? You think it's oh, I'm one? I'm not sure how many it is. Probably one at a time or something. I don't know. But they just sing all day long. Some yes. summers we haven't had that. Yeah. It, it brings me back, I guess, memories. Childhood days, I remember the robins. Yeah, that's a robin. <laughs> you maybe can hear it on there. But I like robins. So continuing with the bird theme, I have in my journal. This the is red, a red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. That's an old <laughs> song from way back. Some of you remember that, but most of you don't. <laughs> so this has to do with chickadees, which I know you love that bird, but I wrote in my like journal. Chickadees are nice, too. They're very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, I enjoyed watching a mother chickadee bringing food to her babies in a, one of my Nest. decorator birdhouses. Mm. It's a long, narrow one attached to the side of our house, on the south side of the house. And it's a decorator one. All of a sudden I discovered, I saw this little chickadee fly in there. She has her nest in there. 
So now you can yeah, hear all the meat. baby chickadees were looking forward to them flying out safely. I remember looking forward to the cats not to be around when they fly out. The kitty cats. Andy and Jennifer have cats. Kitty cats are nice, too. <laughs> but kitty cats are not nice to robins or chickadees sometimes. <laughs> and another enjoy entry this is also about chickadees this way you know, i was working at red umbrella on our sale weekend our summer sale weekend and i put i so enjoyed watching and listening yesterday to five baby chickadees just out of their nest sitting on a tree branch at red umbrella i, I exited the store to the parking lot to get something out of the car and they were singing these little you could tell they weren't the full girl i mean they were what little number? baby chickadees oh maybe they were our no baby they weren't chickadees. ours are you sure <laughs> where did you see them red umbrella parking lot <laughs> okay then but it's like they, they were com weren't ours then. they were communicating <laughs> to each other as they were on their little branch they were all on the same little branches <laughs> the same tree and it's like they were taking practice flights they were flying from this branch, then they fly there. But just, it was concentrated just to one little area with the branches. I just stood there and I just watched them. I loved, I don't know what they were saying to each other, but they were really singing or communicating. About an hour later, I went out. Again, I had to get something from the car to work on. There were none of them left in that tree. <laughs> But it was like I heard them across the street in a big tree there. And I thought, yay, they're learning to fly. <laughs> anyway. I'm probably saying, watch out for the cat. Watch <laughs> out for the cat. <laughs> You're on the cat today. <laughs> so for our sharing today, I'm going to take the lead with wisdom. And we'll start out in Ezekiel 10.10. 10. And this is based, I've been listening to Pastor Keith Moore. He has an awesome series on wisdom. And I've just been listening to it um, different times in the morning. And it says, from the Living Bible is the one I like, a dull axe requires great strength. Be wise and sharpen the blade. That's Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Good news translation says, if your axe is dull and you don't sharpen it, you have to work harder to use it. It's smarter to plan ahead. Well, as I, as I was listening to that on the CD, I thought, oh, reminds me of Danny Fisher. Remember? One of the last times we showed him cutting down our big willow tree. Did it in almost a half hour, almost constant use of his chainsaw. And afterwards, I said, Danny, you, you, it was amazing how you tackled that tree. And he says, well, I sharpened my chainsaw blade really well before I came. That fits in with that verse. He wisely took the time and effort to do it right. And it increased his productivity in cutting down that big tree. Um, the next one is Proverbs 2120. This is from the Living Bible. The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. Another one is Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2, and this one I like from the Amplified. All that's done without God's wisdom or <clears throat> guidance is vanity. 
In other words, it's vain. And in the Hebrew, vain means empty, hollow, meaningless, worthless, useless. So all that's done without God's wisdom and guidance is vanity or vain. Then Amplified says, it's like a wisp of smoke. Over there we have a, what do you call it? Our fire pit. Fire pit. Lots of smoke, but just think of something burns, the smoke, it just goes up into the air. It says it's like chasing the wind. Have you ever caught the wind? It's futile to try and it's vain. It's useless to try and catch the wind. So this is a comment that Pastor Keith Moore made on there. He said, wise people do not waste their time. They don't waste their time. Time is your most valuable resource daily. Time is your most, most important resource daily. Also, wise people don't waste their money. They don't waste their energy. Wise people don't. And you're, we're thinking of this today is, what do I do daily? And so in other words, waste is when you do something without using wisdom. Yeah, and there's not God, good results. You know, from his godly wisdom, right. if you do it, whether it's time or money or what else did you say? Energy, money, energy. resources. So wise people don't waste their time, energy, money, or resources following <clears throat> empty pursuits. Now that was interesting to me. In other words, a pursuit could be something where you put, you and I, we'd put a lot of effort and time into something. I mean, we just pour ourselves in it, maybe a project or I don't know, but it's something that takes your time, but the end result, useless. It never amounted to anything. So what was it? It was a waste of my time. It was a waste of my energy. And it may have been a waste of money if it involved money. And that happens when we don't first, you know, we, we think we have so much to do that we just take off doing it, but we don't take the time to have our, you might say, we could go back to a quiet time with the Lord or, you know, just consulting with the Lord first, mm -hmm. asking, should I do this or shouldn't I, or how should I do it? What should I say or not say? Zach, <clears throat> it's so easy. If we'll stop and think about it, in our day, we come up against something. We're thinking, well, how should I do that? Ask the Lord. Thank you for wisdom. How should I do that? I did that with um, the house siding. I knew it needed on the east side, and it only had one coat of dark brown stain. And it's when I was experimenting a few years ago, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go that dark. So I did one, one coat of stain on it and looked back and I thought, I do like the dark. And I thought, I think I'd like it even darker. So when I went around the house, and that was the most, one of the most challenging parts to do, when I went around the house, I left it with just one coat on the east side. But when we went on the lake side, <coughs> I put two, I made it darker. I applied it darker. Well, yesterday, the weather was right. It was like, it was the right time for me to start working on the east side. So I was doing as much as I could from my stepladder. And then I reached the point where, what did I ask you for? Ladder. Yeah. A taller step taller ladder. ladder. And so tell me what you did. 
Oh, I measured the one she was on. It was only three and a half feet off the ground. So I obviously knew it. that wasn't all. Well, she knew it already, but I went over to check by Andy and Jennifer there, and they had one right out there where they were working. And But that one was only about four and a half feet off the ground. You know, I knew okay. that was a six-foot ladder, but you can only go up so high, of course. So then I thought, well, I'll check, see if Sarah and Andrew have one. And, and they did, but so he says, it's, what did you say? It's not stable or? And so Sarah came out and she says, well, why don't you just take the two girls over there? Then they won't have to do math. I didn't say that. <laughs> what did she say? She wanted us. <laughs> okay thank you for the correction <laughs> but anyway she let them get out of math which Joy wasn't too upset about <laughs> <laughs> and um, they came over so and here got he, all the way yeah so here he comes back he doesn't just have a taller ladder he's got now, Joy and Elsie have changed to their work clothes, their work shoes, and it's like, okay, we're ready to do what you can't do. In other words, go higher. And um, by the end of four hours, they really worked hard, which I didn't know they were going to stay that long. They finished the high part, so now... When we're done here, I'm going to put my work clothes on and finish the little part left. But it was wisdom. It was wisdom that I not be the one up on the roof. Yeah. And doing that. You know, there was one part, too, where I know when I had done it before, I don't know how many years ago was that. I don't know how many. There was a part of the roof where it's got the the angle on it, you know, and so you can't put a ladder on it, you know, because you'd be going this way instead of up. And, but uh, I think I put some kind of boards down there and built it up so that the ladder would be straight. I can't remember what I did. But mm -hmm. We were thinking about that. I thought, no, no way. We'd have Joy or Elsie do that. So then you just need to pray about what do you do. Just not do it. You know, there was the top, what, five feet, four or five feet? Yeah. You couldn't reach. And uh, so we stopped and prayed, and the Lord gave the idea to use a, a roller. They had been using the brush, but use a roller on a pole. I mean, it seems obvious hearing it here, but. Yeah. But, and I guess it was kind of once we stopped, but we stopped and thought about it rather than going ahead and set mm -hmm. up a thing that wouldn't have been wise, you know, dangerous is what it would have been. Mm -hmm. So the Lord gave I guess it wasn't that. wise what I did either before then, was it? No, you did Except it. Except when you're doing something yourself. Yeah. It's that a little different than ago. when you're asking somebody else to do it. Type thing. You know. That's when you were still able to climb up the ladder and do a lot of stuff. Well, it was a lot it's easier. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so when he said that, I went to, he found the extension. I went to find the roller. But when I was getting the roller, I saw the mini roller. I thought that's going to give more control. So the Lord gave each of us wisdom with that. Mm. So here's another note. But that's where you just need to stop sometimes yeah. and pray about it. Yeah. Or share together about it and then pray mm -hmm. together and Lord, he'll give you wisdom. Yes. Practical you may say, just wisdom. don't do it, you know, at this point. Yeah. And you have to have the patience or whatever. To yeah. Just wait until you get a better idea. <clears throat> yeah. So here's another note. Every morning... When we wake up, there is a limited amount of spiritual, mental, and physical strength 
for that day that's ahead of us. There's just so much we can do in a given day. There's just so much we can concentrate on our mental output of energy. Then we need to rest. We, that's wisdom. Then we need to rest our body. Mentally, there needs to be a rest. Spiritual rest, I like that. What's so special is how wonderful that each new day we begin, we have Holy Spirit living in us. He's our personal source of wisdom. He's our personal helper. He helps us to make productive, wise decisions. They're not futile, they're not empty, but there's actually progress involved in them. And then I have, we're almost finished with this, but this is a, I don't know, I just like this example. John 6, verse 12, this is when Jesus was feeding the 5,000 uh, with five barley loaves and two small fish of that little boy. Those, they, he actually fed a lot more than 5,000. Because, yeah. But anyway, verse 12 is the key verse. Mm -hmm. So when all these people were filled, they didn't just get a little nibble. When every one of them was filled, men, women, boys, and girls, Jesus said to his disciples, now gather up the fragrance, fragments that remain. Here's the key part. So that nothing is lost. One of the versions says, so that nothing is wasted. I just thought, what an illustration. Jesus, it's not like, so just leave all the crumbs for the the birds or you know whatever it's like they started to gather up all the fragments 12 baskets it's like he didn't want it to go to waste i don't know maybe they're i don't know what all they did with it but i thought what do we do with leftovers we there's a lot of ways we use really our really leftover it. food yeah they didn't have freezers back then we use our freezer a lot we were taught when they we were growing up yeah. See, our part of it was our parents went through the depression, you know. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be out of that reasoning, right? You know, out of fear. No, <clears throat> but I just thought an uh, easy read version for that verse says, "Don't waste anything." But that was <laughs> I don't know. I like how it's an illustration about food, and then this last part here. It has to do with, well, I'll just read what Pastor Moore said. This is his quote. Wisdom says that everything in your home, in your belongings, should have its own place. Whether it's in your home, your garage, your car, your bedroom, whatever, your office. I just thought about that wisdom. He says, it'll save you time. If you know where to look for something in your office or at work, it's because everything has a place and you know where it belongs. I started thinking, I thought that's really an interesting. And it's like, which also includes when to toss something or give it away. Well, what's going on right now in the summer in Bemidji? Bemidji is a garage sale town. People who are wise, cleaning things out and don't need this. These kids out and grew all these shoes, clothes. There's lots of garage sales. And someone else will typically say, oh, my, that's the size my daughter's going to wear for school or whatever. It helps 
other people. But the key is it helps the person who's having the garage sale. They're cleaning that out of their house. No longer. They don't need it. And it's interesting at Red Umbrella, that's what we'll sometimes get um, at the store. Someone will bring the rest of their garage sale stuff and just say, I'm done with it. I'm done having this sale, but I'm not putting the rest back in the garage for next summer. And so the donate, we have ways of using it or putting it in our free room. But the key of what I'm sharing today, a lot of it is very practical wisdom for our day-to-day -day living. So question to ask yourself is, is there anything I'm doing in a given day that is wasting my time? Show us, Holy Spirit. Just let us have a revelation of that. Thank you, Lord. It's very practical, but time is precious. And so we just thank you, Lord, to show us your answer for that, for us personally. Good. Yeah. Amen. So anything else you need to add or want to? I think our time is just about okay. there today. Yes. We'll Look forward to seeing you again with Touchpoint. Yes. And announcements for the church and such are linked on here too, so you can get those. And you can make it up to church if you live in the area. That would be great to see you. Yes, we'd love that. Blessings. Bye-bye.